Thank you for joining me today for a discussion on non-invasive assessment of liver fibrosis. I'm Patricia Slev, and I'm a medical director at ARUP and an associate professor in the Department of Pathology at University of Utah. I don't have any disclosures relevant to this particular presentation. Chronic liver disease is a major health care burden in the United States. It's a cause of mortality and morbidity in high levels. Chronic liver disease is due to a number of different etiologies, including alcohol abuse, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is actually on the rise due to the epidemic of metabolic syndrome and obesity, and it's expected to surpass hepatitis C in cause for chronic liver disease in the coming decades. And then there is viral hepatitis C and viral hepatitis B. Viral hepatitis C in particular is a major cause of chronic liver disease in the United States. Chronic liver disease can lead to chronic inflammation of the liver and progressive scarring of the tissue in the liver, or fibrosis. Fibrosis stages can be reversible to some extent. The end stage of um, scarring of the liver tissue is cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is an end stage disease associated with complications and is largely irreversible. The other risk for those with chronic liver disease is with increased progressive fibrosis, you can also develop hepatocellular carcinoma. There are several stages to fibrosis. The typical and distinctive architecture in the liver, the one structure that is very unique to the liver is the portal triad as illustrated here, which is composed of an artery, vein, and a bile duct. Fibrosis occurs between these triads. And so stage one fibrosis, also known as portal Portal fibrosis is the development of fibrosis connective tissue that surrounds the portal triads but is limited to those areas. In stage two or periportal fibrosis, fibers begin to extend into the periportal space but do not connect any portal area to any others. Stage three, fibrosis connective tissue now links neighboring portal triads and begins to extend to central veins and distort the shape of the lobules. Stage four, which again is the end stage disease and the most severe form of fibrosis. Most portal areas are now connected by fibrosis tissue. Some portal areas and central veins are also connected. The hepatocyte clusters surrounded by fibrous tissues produce sclerotic nodules affecting liver function, and these patients also develop severe complications. There are risk for ascites, hepatocellular carcinoma, and other complications such as issues with coagulation. Stages two and four are particularly important from a clinical standpoint because they represent points at which treatment or intervention is recommended. So stage two and four are the two critical stages of fibrosis. How do we determine the stage of fibrosis or the amount of scarring in liver tissue? That is generally done with a liver biopsy. The liver biopsy is a much debated gold standard. It's really the reference standard. Why is that? It's because, for one, it is invasive. Um, risks for those who undergo the liver biopsy include pain, which may be an obvious um, uh, result, but also hypertension, bleeding, pneumothorax, infection, and is certainly contraindicated in certain populations. In addition, another issue that has become apparent with um, liver biopsy is that the needle biopsy really only um, obtains a very small tissue sample, and the degree of fibrosis observed within the liver may not be the same throughout the liver. Therefore, by taking such a small um, sample, you may inaccurately determine the stage of fibrosis present in that patient. In addition, there are also some studies that suggest, depending on which lobule is used for the liver biopsy, that may also affect um, how um, the stage of fibrosis may be misclassified because it can differ between the two lobules. And lastly, even on the same biopsy sample, there can be intra-observer variation, and the accuracy of the biopsy interpretation is often influenced by the degree of experience of the pathologist who is doing the histological examination and assigning a stage of fibrosis. Which brings us to the um, reason why non-invasive tests for assessment of liver fibrosis have been developed. So because liver uh, biopsies are contraindicated in some patients, because there is a cost 
because they have um, several limitations, um, such as infection and complications, these alternative methods of assessing um, liver fibrosis have been developed. They can largely be categorized into imaging or non-invasive serum biomarkers. Um, imaging includes um, most commonly, at least in, in the recent um, years, transient elastography. And for non-invasive markers or serum biomarkers, they can further be subdivided into direct and indirect markers, with direct being fragments of liver matrix components produced by the hepatic stels, stellate cells during remodeling, and indirect are actually markers present either increased or decreased concentration due to inflammation or impaired liver function. So how does biopsy versus non-invasive test assessment compare in terms of advantages, limitations, risks, and cost? Um, the advantage of a liver biopsy it is that it is direct, you can evaluate coexisting pathologies, and it is semi-quantitative. Um, the limitation, however, is as we discussed, certain complications following the procedure and intra-observer variability as well as sampling error. The risk, we've also discussed, uh, pain, bleeding, um, hemotherapy, and the possibility of infection and hospitalization. And biopsies are also expensive. Non-invasive tests. The advantage of a non-invasive test is that it can be a measurement of global fibrosis and is suitable for serial observations. So unlike the liver biopsy, which you have to go in and um, accept the risks that are associated with that, non-invasive tests are more suitable uh, for repeated observation due to the limited risk. The limitation to using non-invasive tests is that this is an indirect method of assessing the degree of fibrosis present in the liver. The risks are none because essentially it's either an imaging technique or you are actually using um, just a blood draw to determine the level of fibrosis in the liver. Generally, they're less expensive than biopsies, but again, um, there are some contraindications. For example, erroneous results can be observed in those who have Gilbert syndrome or thrombocytopenia. So direct tests. Direct tests are usually um, biomarkers that are not typically and routinely performed in clinical lab, but these direct biomarkers are an indication of the extent of removal and formation and the process that is going on in terms of fibrosis from the perspective of um, the abnormal balance between formation and removal of the extracellular matrix. So these include extracellular uh, matrix enzymes, glycoproteins, um, such as laminin and vitronectin, glyso aminoglycans, such as hyaluronic acid, which is one of the most uh, widely employed um, direct biomarker in a number of different panel assays. Indirect tests, as I mentioned, are markers that reflect functional alterations of the liver and impairment and inflammation. And some of these um, include um, GGT, ALT, alpha-2 macroglobulin, bilirubin, haptoglobin, APOA1, um, and you can see that actually these indirect markers, which are generally easy to measure in um, clinical chemistry lab, also um, are common to, for example, fibrosure and fibrometers. So you can see the ones that are highlight highlighted in red are actually in common between the two assays, but each assay has its own um, individual components as well. And secondly, the components actually also differ depending on the application of fibrosure or fibrometer. This is a more in-depth look at the comparison between fibrosure and fibrometer. Fibrosure is actually uh, marketed in the United States, but it's the same test as FibroTest, which originated in France. Fibrometer has only recently become available in the United States and also originated in France and is developed by investigators who first developed FibroScan, which is EchoSense. So how does fibrosure and fibrometer compare? So both fibrometer and fibrosure have different um, types of tests and different applications. So for fibrosure, we have a, an assay that is specific for hepatitis C viral infection and one that is specific for alcoholic steatohepatitis and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. In the family of um, testing for fibrometer, again, you have one that is specifically for viral applications. In this case, it's both HCV and HPV, and then alcoholic liver disease and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease are actually two separate um, applications with different markers and different uh, patient demographics that are included. As you can see in um, 
non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, for example, you have additional height and weight or in the case of fiber sugar and weight in the case of fiber meter because those are important in those particular populations. Fiber meter is comparable to fiber sugar and provides a fibrosis cirrhosis score just like fiber sugar does and the necroinflammatory activity score and the Medivir classification F0 to F4 for fibrosis cirrhosis and an activity grade of A0 to A3. As I mentioned, it was first developed at University of Angers in France, and we are now several um, generations into this particular test. It is now available in the United States, and it is from Ecosans, who also developed FibroScan, which is now FDA-approved uh, method for transient elastography for assessing non-invasive assessment of liver fibrosis. And in addition, the fiber meter also has a, an expert system or an algorithm, or algorithm rule method that can um, detect what analytes are not within reference interval and can eliminate this analyte from algorithm, thus correcting and reducing the numbers of false positive or false negative results with fiber meter. This is an example of uh, results from a fiber meter. This is a fiber meter chart. On the left-hand side, you can see we have a patient score for the fibrosis score, the cirrhosis score, a high fibrosis score. In this case, is also um, a high likelihood of having cirrhosis. Um, and then you also have the inflammator or the activity, necroinflammatory activity score, again from 0 to 1.0. And the higher it is, the, light, the more inflammation, and the higher the um, fibrosis score, cirrhosis score, the higher um, the metavir stage, which is uh, on the right-hand side of this particular um, chart report. And then you also have a visual scale that is presented to illustrate the amount of um, activity or inflammation present in this patient's liver, as well as the stage uh, the metavir stage associated with the extent of liver fibrosis present in the patient. Now, because of some of the analytes that are present in fibrosure, there are some limitations to testing with fibrosure, in particular bilirubin and haptoglobin, which are not present in fibrometer. Uh, the problem with bilirubin is that increased bilirubin can be observed in other conditions such as extrahepatic cholestitis or Gilbert syndrome. And also, um, if there is inflammation, you can have an increased haptoglobin, which can give a false negative result. So again, some haptoglobin and bilirubin, since they're not part of fibrometer, do not lead to these particular issues. So that's one advantage of fibrometer over fibrosure. How does fibrometer and fibrosure comp compare in terms of clinical performance? Um, there have been several studies that have looked at this. this is these are data from an independent study published by Sebastiani and colleagues looking at comparison of fibrometer and fibrosure at the F2 and F4 um, metavir um, stages, which again are the two important clinical decision points. And they also um, did an analysis of all the studies that looked at sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive values for these two assays. And as you can see, from this table that fibrometer um, is either equivalent or better than in each category compared to fibrosure. This is another independent study that evaluated four uh, particular tests used to assess liver fibrosis. And you can see here that at F2, the tests were comparable. However, um, Fibrometer and the HEPA score had the highest likelihood ratios and narrower score ranges for stages F3 and F4. In the graph on your right, you have metavir stage on the x-axis and the rate of misclassification uh, as compared to biopsy. And you can see here that the highest rate of misclassification occurred at F2 for both fibrometer and fibro test, which is the equivalent of fibrosure in the United States. However, fibrometer was better than all fibro um, test or fibrosure at all stages. And they both had issues um, with stages F2, 3, and 4. And fibrometer um, was slightly um, less accurate in the F1 stage. As I mentioned, one recent development is transient elastography, which is an ultrasound-based measurement of liver stiffness. Um, this essentially 
is based on uh, measuring liver sti stiffness by how rapidly a wave gets propagated. Um, the faster the wave um, gets propagated, the higher the likelihood that there is liver st stiffness or increased degree of liver fibrosis. Um, this is now FDA cleared. Um, there's one manufacturer, um, Ecosons, and the name of this transient elastography FDA cleared instrument is the fiber scan. Because there are some limitations, and studies have suggested that um, using just surrogate serum biomarkers um, as a sole methodology to assess liver fibrosis may not be um, as accurate and have level of sensitivity and specificity that is needed in clinical applications. Studies have also looked at the example of combining the fiber scan, which is the transient elastography um, result, with fibrometer, which is the non-invasive serum biomarker. And you can see here that each one of them has a diagnostic accuracy that is, does not exceed 80% in this particular study. However, if you combine the results obtained from both fiber scan and fibrometer using a computerized algorithm, the diagnostic accuracy increases dramatically to 86.7%. This is a study that um, also compared fibrometer to fibro scan to fibro test and do a combined index between fibro scan and fibrometer. And you can see here at these three uh, fibrosis stages, greater than or equal to F2, F3, and F4, that even though each uh, marker individually, uh, fibro scan and fibrometer had um, decent um, area under the um, receiver operating curve, when you actually combined the fibrometer and fibrometer scan uh, in the CSF, SF, and C index, you can see that the diagnostic accuracy increases. This is also illustrated when you look at metavir stages and compare these tests on the right-hand side in terms of calorically classifying patients. Um, fibrometer is higher than fibro scan in this particular study and the fibro test. However, combining fibro scan and fibrometer gives you the least amount of incorrectly classified patients. Recently, hepatitis C um, management guidelines have suggested that the most efficient strategy for assessing liver fibrosis is to combine serum biomarkers and transient elastography and maybe consider biopsy for any patient with discordant results between the two testing methods if the information will be used to make clinical decisions. So to summarize, liver biopsy is the cornerstone of managing patients with chronic liver disease and remains the reference method for assessing liver fibrosis. Non-invasive biomarker panels do not have sufficient accuracy to replace biopsy per se. However, non-invasive biomarker assays combined with transient elastography provides increased accuracy and algorithms that combine two or more serum biomarker assays or biomarker assay and a transient elastography met methodology can be used to provide sufficient accuracy for staging liver fibrosis and significantly reducing the number of biopsies needed. Thank you.